Madam Chair, I'd like to move up item I, use of projector. I get a second on 20. A second for discussion. We have another item here that's been on the agenda um, for two months now. Again, um, I don't know how we're going to have a factual discussion about it. If we one, it needs to be one. If we don't have a fresh memory of it, let's move it up, get it out of the way. Is there any discussion on this motion? Same thing again. If we can have a, if we can guarantee a time limit on it, I'd, I'd be happy to get some of this stuff off. Would you make my point in two minutes? All those in favor of moving up this agenda item, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Madam Chair, I'd like to move up item H. Fails. I mean, I'd like to move up item H, high school settlement financial impact. I'd get a second, I'll explain my reasoning. I'll second for discussion. As we saw last week, and we've seen in the press, and we've seen everywhere, everybody's throwing around numbers. We have produced, we have not produced a number, and um, I think that uh, we could have uh, stopped a lot of the different numbers and so forth if we had produced a number, and I think we should do that. Or at least have a discussion about doing it. Is there any further discussion? I, um, I think this one is very important to the town. Um, there's, there's been so many different numbers and facts, and we keep pointing people to go read the contract and stuff. I think a financial impact statement would be good. I'll support it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I would like to make a motion that we schedule a non-meeting with the school district's attorney, Gordon Graham, at the earliest convenience for the board to review all aspects of the no negotiated agreement, specifically the financial impact of this settlement and what, what the financial impact may have been had litigation continued. I'd like to release as much information from the mediation as we can know now that the matter is closed in an ethical manner and move on. If I get a second, I will speak to my motion. I'm getting notes from folks in town on selected facts, opinions, guesses on town blogs, Facebook, related to the financial aspects of the agreement with Manchester. The purpose of these posts is not constructive. What they do is unnecessarily creating uncertainty, doubt, and angst about the agreement. I think we need to provide folks with as much information about all aspects of the negotiations as we can, we can without breaching confidentiality. Um, Madam Chair, I don't understand how you're going to ask Gordon Graham to give you possible impacts from litigation. I think Gordon would be the first one to tell you, and even when he was advising us, that those were nothing in stone. What we have been asking for is what is the impact on what this board approved. That's in stone, it's at the DOE, it's done deal. So we can calculate that. Anything else is going to be a guess. And I don't think it's appropriate to start guessing what the cost of litigation may have been. Is there any discussion on this? I just, um, you read your motion kind of fast. Okay. Could you just Would say like it again a little slower? Okay. I would like to make a motion that we schedule a non-meeting with the school district's attorney, Gordon Graham, at his earliest convenience for the board to review all aspects of the negotiated agreement, specifically the financial impact of this settlement and what the financial impact may have been had litigation continued. I'd like to release as much information from the mediation as we can now that the matter is closed in an ethical manner and move on if I get then I get my yeah. So I just, just hearing it clearly, I just, uh, my only comment on that is, uh, is putting our attorney in a difficult position, um, talking about things that shouldn't be disclosed to the public, and, um, and this thought of may have been, nobody has a crystal ball. And I think we even said that to ourselves here. Um, so it's a kind of a crapshoot to predict what may have been you know, we could have been 100% successful, 
or we have been, could have been 100% uh, unsuccessful. That's the idea of the mediated agreement is people come together and, and agree what they're going to come away from the table with. So I won't support this. I mean, I, I like the idea of getting the facts. I just don't think um, I don't think that's the right way to go about it. I agree with Mr. Pearl. What he said is we have um, specific information, a financial impact. I just think we need to tie that up and get that out there for folks. So we stop all the questions. Well, just um, to further clarify, um, this was something that um, Bill Devo felt very strongly about um, when he um, was speaking to Gordon on the phone during mediation. There were a lot of numbers thrown around. And after the fact, when you're not writing them all down as fast as you can when you're receiving a phone call, and he, um, Phil, has a great deal of concern about what he is able to say and what he isn't able to say um, based on the confidentiality of mediation. Um, he has also said a couple of times, well, Trisha, what's your opinion? And I'm not speaking about mediation because I'm very fearful that things I learned in mediation when I went to mediation, it was very clear from the first five minutes of it that what happened there stayed there. We weren't allowed to reveal anything. <coughs> um, and I so desperately do not want to do say something wrong. And um, this was a suggestion that um, he had that might help that. Well, Madam Chair, had we gone down to K, we got a letter from Gordon kind of outlining what can be said about that mediation because if you look at what was covered and protected under 91A, that's obviously stuff that can't. I don't think we do the, the, the public any service to, to try to tout out numbers that are worst case, best case, and that's an opinion. When we haven't provided the impact of what we have obligated the, the district to. So why don't we start with step one and get a financial statement made by the district, by the SAU, that will probably be far more accurate than anything that anybody is writing. And then if people want it, and you never move that up. This yes, was, yes, we did. No, we didn't. I didn't. You brought this up. No. That motion failed. No, no, no. no. H Pass. H pass. And then H I made a motion under it. Or an H. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it failed. Sure. 3 to 1, it passed. 2 to put up on the agenda, passed 3 to 1. And then she made a motion to. Dr. Lewis, I'm assuming that you'll be presenting what the, the budget is fairly soon to the, to the school board. Am I correct in assuming that? When you're about when you'll be getting one? <coughs> I will be presenting something. Approximately when? Uh, we have to set a date tonight. Right? What's that? <coughs> we have to set the date tonight. We have to set the date tonight. Um, within that budget that you're working on now, I'm assuming that all the factors of the settlement agreement are also uh, being worked out within that budget. Am I, am I right or am I wrong assuming that? Well, uh, at least for next year. I don't want to say that for next year. Long, but uh, I'm hoping that during the budget cycle, decisions will be able to be made of where our youngsters may be going next year. So, um, short of that, the true financial, and, and it's a matter of like definition of terms. What is the financial impact? And we're struggling with this. What is this financial impact of the uh, mediated agreement? Well, first of all, it ends the tuition agreement in Manchester. The 20 -year. It does provide for an adjusted tuition rate of $10,200 for the 2014-2015 school year. 
Our problem right now is we don't know how many youngsters will be attending the Manchester School of Science. The board has voted that if a youngster attends a satellite school, that we will pay base tuition. And any difference between base tuition and the tuition of that satellite school will be the parents' responsibility. We haven't negotiated that fact yet with the satellite schools. I'm assuming that they all agree. We don't, we haven't negotiated a contract, we haven't approved a contract with the anchor school. And I don't want to assume that the anchor school's tuition is going to be how you define base tuition. And I don't know yet what the uh, tuition is for that anchor school. Nor have you approved a contract for that anchor school. So I think right now I saw some projections uh, out and about uh, that were very interesting. Uh, most very flawed, but a couple. It's pretty much the you know, magnitude. Um, but I think we'd have to say that. So some of the analysis that I saw, I hope you have Karen do this. Some of the analysis I saw was our base tuition in Manchester was going to increase by seventeen hundred dollars a year. We have X number of high school age students. If they were all to attend Manchester, that's $1,700 more a year. You multiply the number of kids times that $1,700 and you get a number. That number is not the financial impact of the settlement. That number is an order of magnitude how much more it would cost to send all our kids to Manchester School District. And the actual cost of high school tuition next year more or less. So that, that analysis we could do, uh, that won't be what our budget is. Uh, again, our budget, I think, is going to go down to the water uh, when it comes to tuition. And we're going to have to have some idea what we should be planning on. And what we should be planning on is whatever plan is adopted by or approved on this board. It's, it, it's a little ambiguous, but you know, we could certainly do it the other way. I mean, I've seen other people do it. Say, well, our kids continue in Manchester, it's $1,700 more a year. This is the order of magnitude, and the financial impact is not going to be less than that. Um, I think we could simply say, under current contractual agreements and current policy, our projected impact is X. Whether the kids currently under policy go to Manchester or any of the other public schools, the impact on this, this immediate agreement is the same. So, and we also have the 200,000 we know about. So, I think if we put that language in to clarify what it's based on and that it's a projected impact because even if you had 616 public students right now, we know that might not be next year. But the problem is exactly what Dr. Littlefield said. There's all kinds of calculations from people that are not as skilled at making these calculations. And of us as a board has provided nothing. So in the void of our information, concerned parents come out with figures and people start to take those to heart. I've come out with my own. I'm not going to hide it. I, I have calculations. Um, 
But I think the fact of whether the children go to Manchester or public schools, we kind of fortified that last week of how, what we're going to pay. So we're really, right now, under current policy and contract at 10-2, unless something changes, unless we ratify an agreement or agreements. But it probably would only be one agreement that would change tuition at this point. Because if somebody doesn't sign the MOU, okay, well, they're off the table. We're not going to pay any to them. And if the Pinkerton contract comes in higher, it would be higher. I don't think we're really projecting it coming in lower. But I think if we stated under current contractual agreements and policy, this is what it's projected. But I think that that implies that the impact is going to be added to the budget. And I think when the community looks at this, this is what, that's what they're looking for. How much more is this going to cost? And I think what I was hearing from Dr. Littlefield is that just because that might be the impact, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the budget is going to go up. So I think when we're talking about this, we, we need to, to, to levy that against what this impact is so that the community understands that, that that's not just a number that's going to be necessarily slapped on to, to the, what our budget is now. Um, so I, I can understand why Dr. Littlefield is saying that this is still, we're in an area where we need a lot of uh, questions answered before we can really solidify um, how, what this is going to impact, I would say, more of the budget for next year than the impact of the settlement. You know, I was just trying to look for a compromise here in you know, some of our other questions. <clears throat> like, um, you know, we end here with additional financial <coughs> impact will be determined by the negotiation of future contracts, you know? Um, so kind of mix in with what Mr. Pearl said based upon current um, policy um, and current contract and impact is based on this many students and then follow up with, you know, additional changes can occur. You know, that way people know there's ongoing negotiations, which could make it, as Dr. Littlefield said, go up or down. Um, but at least they have an idea of the, the current financial impact based upon what we have in policy today. And just a compromise. I think if you wanted to be add more clarity, you could say the estimated financial impact, because obviously if kids go up or down, but I don't understand how you say that money is not going to be in the budget. That money has to be in the budget. My understanding is even if we go into default, a uh, default budget, that's a contractual agreement that we've agreed to. We have got to pay X amount of kids at 10-2. And X amount of kids, in my view, is every public high school kid. Whether they go to Manchester or they go to another school, unless we change our policy, we're paying 10-2. So if you do the math, I came out at the 1.2 million per year. That's got to go in the budget. Or you know, you could, I mean, if we knew there was going to be a decline next year and we really wanted to play it close, you could say we think it's going to be 1.1 or whatever. But that money absolutely has to go in the budget. And the budget may not go up that much because we might cut other things. So you could say that, but that money has got to be in the budget. We're going to get into my area of not greatness, um, which is budgets. When, if I remember a few years ago when we were doing the high school line item, do we fund that at 100% of the high school aged kids, or is there some less percentage of it that we do? Like, for some reason it's resonating that we funded it at 92% one year. Or is it is that every year, or do we typically always fund it at 100% of our high school aged students? What we did, because <clears throat> youngsters do go to private school between the eighth and the ninth grade level, so what we did is we took a five-year window, I think, and um, calculated a cohort survival factor, mm -hmm. like what percentage of our eighth graders end up in public high school. Uh, we did that every year for uh, five years and took the average of those five years. And uh, 90, what did you say, 92? 92, I, I think that was pretty close in one way. Yeah. I was just 
Yeah, but that, that, and that's going to be when we get into budget for the board. Um, that's going to be something you may want to revisit uh, because uh, you may find that as, as, as the board approved more and more youngsters to attend a high school other than Manchester over those years, we also saw our private school enrollments increasing um, and with more choices available to them, uh, it could very well be that people choose a public school alternative rather than a private school alternative. So I'm not sure that that methodology we've used in the past is an accurate reflection of what's going to happen in the future. And I think we could certainly add in the, the phrase under current enrollments or current projected enrollments. I don't think if we give a financial impact, anybody's going to run down here and complain and say, oh, it's $45,000 difference. If you can say, yeah, well, our projected was six hundred, and now you've got uh, 640 or whatever that number would be. I don't think we're going to get that kind of criticism if it's, if it's stated what that impact is based on. And I think that just gives us a firm footing so we understand, the public understands what kind of money we have committed to. I believe it should have happened before we agreed to that, but it didn't. And it hasn't happened since, and now we're going to come into the budget, and I don't think just providing that information in the budget is going to be clear to anybody, because the budget is complicated, and there's a lot of factors that go into it. So I, I think we should have a, a financial impact prepared. And just for my own clarification, we don't have a motion on the floor right now, do we? No. Is there any more discussion on this item? Well, I would ask someone that voted this down to vote for reconsideration. I would make a motion, but under the rules of Robert, the Robert's rules, I'm not eligible to make a motion. Um, I would ask one of the two of you that, that voted uh, in the prevailing side to reconsider this issue because it is very obvious the confusion that's being put out there as we're now trying to move into the contract state. Uh, I think we should put this to bed and not let it be, you know, the fodder for more and more uh, misinformation. The only thing I have to add is um, I think it's a fairly straightforward thing that I think we can show the, the town that we can work together, the four of us. Um, Dr. Littlefield made mention that uh, Karen could produce something like this, and you know, we could stipulate what it is, you know, use that language so it's very clear, so nobody makes any assumptions or anything else. And, you know, I just think it would be a, a simple one for us to work together on. It's your decision. I, I, I can't. 